the bridge. Ta-da! I know I already said that at the end of the last video, but, you know, it's like a reality TV show. I have to remind you of what you just saw. So we're now talking about bridges and why were bridges such a huge step forward? Well, we can now create smaller collision domains, which in turn resulted in fewer overall collisions. And bridges were generally placed between hubs to create these multiple collision domains. Bridges didn't replace hubs as much as they were just a nice addition to our network because we could do something like this, where we have two smaller collision domains now and data sent by the hosts on the left cannot collide with data sent by hosts on the right, where when we had one big collision domain, anybody's data could collide with anybody. Now, if this is the first time you've heard the phrase collision domain, and the first time you've seen the concept, it might throw you a little bit, because frankly, uh, it did me a long time ago when I've read about this, because it sounds like if you have more collision domains, you'll have more collisions. And actually, it's the total opposite. The more collision domains you have, the fewer collisions you have because what we're doing with that bridge is logically segmenting the network. You know, physically segmenting it would not be a good idea. But what we're doing is we're lowering the odds. You know, life is all about odds and sometimes so is networking. And what we did here is we lessened the odds of a collision with a bridge and that was a big plus. Now, the only problem with bridges, or a big problem, <clears throat> is that they did not help us create smaller multiple broadcast domains because this network is still one big broadcast domain. And as the network grows larger, so does the total number of broadcasts. And you can see what I was referring to here in the other video, the previous video, because what we've got now are two hubs and we could easily connect more devices, more devices than we had in the diagram in the last one. We could put 16 on each one, 32, however many ports we have on that hub. And the more hosts we have, the more broadcasts we have and the more broadcast propagation we end up with. So again here with our bridge, the big plus was being able to create smaller collision domains which resulted in fewer collisions. The big minus, if you will, was that we still have one big broadcast domain so our broadcast propagation is really the same. Now I want to introduce a term to you too about what we get when we go to switches because that's where we're going now because when we do replace our hubs and repeaters and our bridges with a single switch we gain immediate benefits especially when each host is connected to its own switch port which in reality it usually is i'm going to show you one example in this section where it's not uh, when we get to frame forwarding you'll see why at the time but generally real world and certainly on the exam every host is going to have its own switch port that means that every host is in its own little collision domain literally data collisions cannot occur in that situation and we really like that now this one host to one port topology it's micro segmentation it's not a term you see terribly often but cisco throws it around once in a while so it's a good one to know and this design again it eliminates any chance of collisions and here's exactly what i'm talking about and by the way this is the universal symbol for a layer two switch so when you see this you know it's a switch you got four arrows, two pointing to the left, two pointing to the right. You are on a switch. And if they show you one of these in a diagram on the exam, you're expected to know what it is by sight and how it behaves. So here we have four hosts, four ports, and four separate collision domains. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Now, what about the broadcast domains? What do you think at this point the default behavior of the switch is going to be? Well, as you see on the bottom of this screen, Cisco switches do not break up broadcast domains by default. And this network is still one large broadcast domain. A quick note here about what I have at the top for you as far as micro segmentation. Uh, the other benefit there is that the hosts no longer have to share their bandwidth with other hosts. So theoretically, theoretically, each host can run at 200 meg, 100 sending, 100 receiving because they can send and receive at the same time too when they have their own switch port like that. Really cool stuff. But again, if this is the first time you've seen it, it, it may just blow you away. It's like, wait a minute, when am I going to start breaking up broadcast domains? Because this is what we have with this particular setup. We have four hosts connected to a switch. We have four separate collision domains. Therefore, we can't have any collisions and we love that. But we still have one big broadcast domain by default and there is the important phrase by default we can easily logically segment the network so that we can limit the scope of broadcasts 
And we do that with what we call a virtual local area network or a virtual LAN or a VLAN. And we're going to be creating those here very shortly. But by default, all of your hosts connected to a Cisco switch, they are all in the same broadcast domain. So a quick review here before we move forward. We've got hubs, which give us one collision domain that consists of all the connected hosts, one broadcast domain that contains all those same hosts, and only one host can transmit at a time. With bridges, they allow us to logically segment the network and to lessen the size of collision domains, but they don't do squat as far as broadcast domains go. And finally, switches bring us these wonderful one host collision domains, that micro segmentation, and the capability to logically segment the broadcast domain, although that's not done by default. And we're going to be doing plenty of that in the next couple of videos. Also coming up next, we're going to look at how switches handle incoming frames and the three-pronged, if you will, the three-pronged frame forwarding decision that's coming up next.